Hi, I'm Teresa Ward and I teach second grade at Northview Primary. And I wanted to share this book with you that I got when I went on a cruise to Alaska. And it is called Alaskan Night Before Christmas. Alaskan Night Before Christmas by Trisha Brown, illustrated by Alan Stacy. Twas the night before Christmas in the famed last frontier where the northern lights shimmer through skies crisp and clear. At North Pole, Alaska, the work was all done under brilliant white spotlights, no sign of the sun. Now doubling the pace, the elves toiled into night to load up the sled for a long winter's night. Talk about cold, near 40 below, but jolly old Santa could go with the flow. He had plugged in the sled, changed out the used oil, had the ice scraper packed, grill covered with foil. The rig now was full. The big man stood ready. He called to his flyers, urging all to hold steady. Yet it's not like you've heard. The crew didn't consist of eight miniature reindeer. Here's the story you missed. At the head of the team stood a proud looking critter with dinner plate hooves and white fur on his sitter. In the prime of his life, the antlers ample in size, a fine rack to spar other bucks for a prize. Kotzebue the caribou, named for the town near the sweep of the circle cross. Kotzebue sound, glad of his calling, no pet deer was he. Kotz and his kin were wanderers, the free. His hackles had risen when he first heard the story of eight tiny reindeer. Oh, blast it to glory. I'm a boo, not a reindeer, he said with insistence. But in spite of his words, he had met much resistance. Every Christmas, the stories were told and retold of Santa and reindeer, the lies that were sold. Kids never grew tired of that sorry tall tale. Cartoons about Rudolph re-ran without fail. Now this certain year, Vane Kutzebu yearned to fix unclear thinking where deer were concerned. Kotz wanted that glory. He wanted the fame. He wanted a carol that featured his name. Sure, Kotz was stuck up, but he wasn't all bad. He just wanted attention if there was some to be had. And Christmas was perfect for grabbing the light, which he did all year long when a tourist hid sight. Who told you wild critters are so camera shy? Kotz chased down a tour bus one time on the fly. He'd gallop behind them. Look at me, look at me. The driver then spied him and slowed down to see. See, it's Denali. And not long ago, Santa had asked the whole group to line up according to alphabet soup. Kotz told the others they'd learned it all wrong. It's the KBCs, not the ABCs. You know that great song. Now back to our story of one solemn night when all were preparing to ha head out in flight. Kotz positioned himself in the number one post. If a camera crew showed, he'd give them the most. This particular year, he had groomed extra long. He'd been working out daily to look extra strong. He wondered if radar would show his best side convinced that this Christmas he'd be hitting his stride. Before they left town, Santa bumped through his list of caribou names that made his tongue twist. He had named them himself for towns of the north, but he fumbled each Christmas ere time to go forth. Now, Kutzebue, now Kajek, now Egik and Iquak. On Tukalusk and Otogak, 
on Nigerist and New Talk. From the top of the world to the heart of each kid, let's fill up their eyes with the treasures they bid. Away they all went with cots in the lead. He'd sent out releases for media feed. At New York and London, Paris and Rome, he had planned a press conference before heading home. In his head danced ideas so unchristmas like of me first and stardom of bright city lights. So distracted was he by his self-centered thoughts that the team became lost thanks to big-headed cots. Down through the ice fog they went for a look. A mountain, a signpost, perhaps a guidebook, spiraling hunting a landmark they sought to reset their bearings but all seemed for naught. Santa's eyes how they squinted, his hands how they gripped. In the lead, Cots just sprinted while his pride slightly dipped. Just then the fog parted and the team spied a place for landing unnoticed as they tried to save face. Much to Santa's surprise, they hadn't gone far. They sat down in Anchorage where a reindeer named Star had spent his young life in a pen at the zoo, never hearing of Santa or vain Kotzebue. In Northern Spirit, Star gave his best treats, a map, a clean bathroom, a zoo mug, some eats. Humble and sharing, so unlike our cots. Star hosted a feast. Please eat more, I have lots. The boo wasn't humbled by all this good grace. Caught snubbed the nice reindeer right to his face. See you later, short stuff. Time to go meet the press. Plus, we gotta do Christmas for the kids, more or less. Santa heard that exchange and was shocked to the core. He had had it with Cots. This boo was a bore. He called a time out to nip bad behavior. On this eve, that's to welcome the birth of the Savior. Saying, see you tomorrow, he swapped cots for Star, who was such a sweet servant, loving, unmarred. By puffed up importance in this holy season, every Christmas from then, cots remembered the reason. In the end, the great cots spent a night at the zoo, and the zookeeper wondered if Star had the flu. And the press wrote about reindeer in lead, and Kotzebue the caribou learned a lesson indeed. Cots lost his swell gig, twas a wonderful living, just cause he was big on taking, not giving.